Hey, 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 planty people. Welcome back. It's your boy, Jordan. Thank you for coming back to Kentucky Plant Daddy. Today's video is going to be five plants that I consider not thriving in my care, failing in my care, um, or they're not dead, but they're just not doing how they should be doing. So these are going to be my five plant fails that are within my collection currently. Okay, so the first plant that we're going to talk about that's kind of failing in my care is the Hoya sigillatus or sigitalis. I can't remember which one it is, but it's this beautiful dark leafed Hoya that has this silver speckling. And I have it rooting right now in fluval stratum. Um, what happened was I got this plant from a Facebook purchase and it was quite a bigger plant. It was in soil. And um, I had it for a month or two. It started to rot, but like the stem, not the roots, which is weird because like I took the entire thing out and looked at the roots and they were nice and white, healthy looking roots. But it got like a black stem up to a certain point. Um, so I cut it a, a good ways above the black part and then I rooted out what I could to save what I could of the plant. Now, there were a few more cuttings. I think I only have two cuttings in here. There was probably about four or five cuttings. Um, these are the only two cuttings that actually rooted um, in even in my fluval stratum. Which, you know, depending on who you talk to, people act like it's a godsend and people act like it's no different than any other, like, medium that they can root in. I really like fluval stratum, um, but either way, um, this plant did not do well rooting. Um, I lost half of even the cutting. So now I have these two small cuttings and I'm going to put these in Lechuza Pond and um eventually hopefully have another plant of this uh we'll see because so far um this has been a struggle bus plant for me and this is the hoya sigillatus or sigitalis i can't remember i will say that there are some new little baby leaves like right here coming out so it is at least the two that is um rooted in the swivel stratum are giving me some new growth so that's our first plant, Hoya sigillatus. Okay, so the second plant is also going to be a Hoya, which is kind of interesting because I usually don't have issues out of my Hoyas. Yeah, usually they're super um, slow growing and um, maybe they stay smaller plants longer but they usually seem like healthy plants and um, can take quite a bit of neglect. Um, these Hoya are giving me issues. So this next Hoya is Hoya Nuna. Um, I got this at a plant swap. Um, I can't remember what I swapped this for. Maybe like just like a Manjula cutting or something. But it's a cute Hoya. Um, they have these like kind of broad flat leaves. Um, the reason why this has made the list is because, um, when I first got this plant, it came to me in water from the plant swap and it had like a good little root system. I ended up bringing it home and putting it in pond. And what I think happened was that I overwatered it and, um, caused a little bit of root rot because this plant, it has five leaves right now. I think that two of them have fallen off. Um, so this is just more probably like care error, user error, my own problem. I wasn't used to this plant and it was like, it's like a juvenile small little plant. So I think sometimes uh, whenever you don't have established plants that it's easier to make mistakes, especially with new plants that you don't know the consistency that they're wanting yet. Um, so I think that um, this plant in particular, I think that I overwatered. Um, I haven't lost any leaves in a month or two, but it just has not grown at all. So 
I'm just letting it chill and letting it kind of dry, stay dry, er, um, and we'll see. Maybe it'll eventually reestablish and, and be a cute plant one day, but this is the Hoya Nuna. That's my pond dropping. Um, and we'll just, I'll give you an update in a few months of how this plant looks. Okay, the third plant that I'm going to talk about is a very notorious plant for just not being the easiest. And this is going to be my Philodendron Brantianum. So, it actually looks pretty good on camera. Um, it looks good in real life too as far as like what you see. But um, if you guys had seen this plant when I got it, um, this is quite a bit smaller. I will say that, so I had this big full plant. It was in soil. Um, I was having issues with the leaves. Like as it was growing, the, it, they were getting stuck. I was having to cut off all of the new growth. So I decided to chop the plant up completely. And then I rooted out all the individual leaves and I put parts of them in pond and I put parts of them in LECA. So they all rooted out appropriately. They all looked really good and healthy, but then the, I was still having the leaf problems. Like the leaves are getting stuck coming out and like all my old growth looks fine, but all the new growth are looking warped and weird. So I decided to salvage what I could and put them on a moss pole. And my hopes was that if I kept them a little bit wetter, that they would stop um, having the leaf problems when they emerged. And then also that giving it the moss pole and like keeping it wet would like aid in maybe like some additional humidity that would also help with the leaf problem. Um, I love this plant. I love the look of this plant. There's nothing like a Hartley philodendron. And then if you can add this beautiful silveriness that are on these leaves, like that's exactly what the Brandiatum is. It's a Hartley philodendron with like beautiful silvery blue tones in it. So like this aesthetically, this plant is one of my favorites. Like if I had a big, healthy, beautiful one of these on a pole, I, this would be like, wish list but um unfortunately i can't get it to grow that well i will say that it is giving me a little bit of hope on the moss pole but i think that it still might need like additional humidity and i don't have a cabinet or anything like that um eventually i might get one but i've been like a really big proponent on like if it doesn't grow in my environment without like some extreme measures is it a plant that i want to keep in my collection so i think that if this plant were to die on me today i would not rebuy it um unless i got a cabinet and then i might consider putting this in the cabinet Something else I've thought about doing is that I have like a vessel, a glass vessel with like a lid on it. Um, I have, I have half a mind to take a cutting of this and see if I can't grow it like in that, in some sort of like terrarium setup. Um, but we'll just have to see because like I said, this is a beautiful plant. I hate to put this on like a no buy, um, list for me again. But you guys can see the new growth. It's not like sized up. It's not, it's still kind of coming out. They always come out like backwards and then eventually orient to the lot. Um, but yeah, so here we are, Philodendron Brantiatum, and she is a struggle bus. But once again, she's a beautiful struggle bus. So we'll see if this stays in my collection for very long. Okay, to nobody's surprise, the fourth plant that I'm going to talk about is my Calathea White Fusion. <laughs> so I had this old um, fish tank that I wasn't using. And what I've done is this plant is like curled up at all the edges. Everything was looking super crispy. Um, when you look closer at it, you could find several leaves that had spider mites on it. 
So what I did was I cut away all of those super unhealthy leaves and I was left with like three leaves that weren't crunchy and then um, kind of gave it a little spray with um, some insecticide and then um, I watered it because it's in pond and then I put it in this fish tank for like additional humidity and underneath the lid part, there's like uh, whatever the clean grab. So like, I know that this plant is giving like the humidity that it needs. Now it has grown since I put it in here. I think I have like six leaves or so. I still see some of these leaves curling at the ends. I'll try to get like a video clip specifically of what it looks like in here without all the glare. But um, the leaves are kind of curling. And also, I don't see any mites or spider mites that I can see, but um, I can't keep a plant like this forever, right? So it's like, if I quit doing all this extraness, if I take it out of here, it's likely gonna just curl back up and look terrible again. And I really don't know what to do. Um, 10 out of 10, I do not recommend <laughs> the Calathea White Fusion. It's a beautiful plant. Um, I have pictures of it, like maybe I can put here of when I first got it. It sh even shipped well and it didn't decline like rapidly. It just progressively declined like over a few two to three months. So, um, I should have known. I did know this plant has a horrible reputation. Um, not that I thought that I was like some master house plant person that was going to get it right, but I, sometimes you find that what people are saying about certain plants, um, aren't exactly true. Not that they're not true. It's probably true to them. It's more like anecdotal, right? It's like, maybe in their environment, in their conditions, that plant had no chance. But depending on what you can do with a plant in your environment, you might do very well with certain plants that other people um, really struggle with. So I wanted to give it its due diligence and give this plant an attempt. Um, this so far has been poor for me. Um, but, uh, you win some, you lose some. I'm never going to buy another White Fusion Calathea. I am going to continue to try to rehabilitate the one that I have. But in a few months, we'll go over some updates and see. I doubt that this um, White Fusion will stay in my collection for years and years. It's going to be like when it eventually tuckers out and lives its last life. <laughs> Okay, so the last plant that I'm going to go over today that's kind of been failing for me. I don't know if I should even include this in this video because it was never my plant that I had established and it's like died over like some time in my care. I bought it as a single leaf cutting. The leaf yellowed off and I have a growth point, um, but I'm keeping it in like a humidity dome situation. Um, it is just a variegated Tetrasperma Raphidora, Raphidora, I don't know how to say that. I'll put it here on the screen. Tetrasperma. And, um, so it was, the leaf died back after a day or two of me having it. I had concerns. It's got a root system in here that looks pretty okay. Um, and there is a tiny, I don't know if you can see, growth tip there. It's like green on the end. There for a second, I don't know if you can see like here, it was brown and I thought my entire maybe cutting was going bad, but then like a little green tip emerged. So I have hope once more. Um, like I said, this wasn't like an established plant for me that's been failing, but I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that I can get this tetrasperma to give me some life. And if it doesn't, I'm concerned, I guess, because I don't have a lot of experience with Raphidophora. Um, I had a regular tetrasperma in the main beginning of my first kind of plants. I got it from Lowe's. Um, but 
the variety that I got. You could just tell that it was like sickly. Um, I still got it to root out and do okay, but I rehomed it like pretty quickly because I just wasn't happy with how it looked in general. So, um, I also have a Raffidophora Decursiva cutting that I got from a swap. Um, that'll be in a later video because I finally got it to root out in some stratum and I'm going to have to pot it up. But I don't have like a lot of experience with this genus, which is supposed to be a pretty easy one, I'm pretty sure. But um, I just don't know with this being like the variegated version of this plant, um, if how healthy it's going to be. But I'm hopeful now that I have this growth point showing that we're going to see it. And hopefully in a few months, I can give us a good update about this plant. Out of all the plants, I feel the most um, hope for this one because these other plants have at least, like, they're like plants or they were plants. And, like, I failed them pretty hard, which is why they're in the situations that they're in versus like at least this plant, I didn't, even if this don't make it, I'm not claiming the fail because it's an, it was a single leaf cutting. Like that can go any way every time. But um, hopefully this plant does not fully fail for me. Okay guys, so that is gonna conclude the plants that I have chosen for this video as the five plants that are kind of failing in my care. Um, I wanted to kind of make this video so that people know that this is a normal part of the process. Um, when you are taking care of so many plants, or maybe you don't have a lot of plants, maybe it's just a few plants, um, it's important to know that like growth isn't linear. You're going to have setbacks. You know, not every one of your plants are going to be at its peak health all at the same time. It's just like, think of like humans, like humans get a cold, they're not doing good that week. Humans get um, chronic illnesses, they're not doing good um, maybe that few months. Um, plants are living things and they're not always going to be doing great. Um, now, obviously, we can be causing some of these problems, but... The more that you have a plant in your care and the more that you get used to its needs, the more that we can give it the environment that it's wanting and hopefully keep it healthier for longer. Um, I will say that um, you shouldn't be afraid to cut your plants. If something is quickly happening if you're going to risk losing the entire plant, just like how I did with the um, Sigitalis, um, that plant all of a sudden was having some sort of black stem issue where like you could tell as it progressed up my um, stem that like that plant was going to be dead, like no chance. So I cut above that and then I rooted out like some cuttings. Don't be afraid to do that. Um, it could save you and give like give you an opportunity to rehab a plant and learn more about it. I think something that I learned about that plant was that um, it likes being way drier than some of my other Hoyas as well, which people will arguably say that Hoyas like to be dry. Um, I haven't necessarily found that in my experience. Um, I think that they like to be drier, but I think I still water my Hoyas consistently. I've heard people going months and months without watering Hoyas, which is fine if that works for you in your care. Um, it's just not what I have found. This particular plant likes to be even drier than my regular Hoya is what I have found. Um, I really appreciate you guys coming and watching my videos here at Kentucky Plant Daddy. I'm getting ready to do some plant chores. As you can see, my little water jugs and spray bottles and things over here. So if you don't care to subscribe here to my channel at Kentucky Plant Daddy, and I'm going to put my Instagram stuff below like I always do. Um, follow me at Kentucky Plant Daddy on Instagram. And then the ending emoji that we're going to have is uh, put me a little wine glass or um, something like that at the end because I might um, have me a little glass of wine as I do the rest of my plant chores. 
Um, it's just going to be some watering and things like that, but it'll be, um, probably not the rest of the day, but like maybe the next two or three hours, I'm going to be running around looking, um, at all my plants and pest checking and, um, watering. So I hope you guys have a good day. Thank you guys for coming to Kentucky Plant Daddy and I'll see you guys in the next video.